Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 15th day of Christmas here on Off the Wall. I got Chris with me. Chris, how you doing? Yeah, I'm doing all right. Is, running a very little sick because I'm running an American time for you guys, but yep, great apart from that. <laughs> is it cold up there in Scotland for you? No, it's actually no, it's actually a warm day for once. Oh, well, nice. Well, nice. well it's seven, 70 degrees, so you know. <laughs> and that is winter. Celsius, folks. Celsius, yes. <laughs> not, not this far, ain't nonsense. Well, anyways, today we're going to be discussing your favorite Christmas movie. So what movie is that? Why is it your favorite? Tell us a little about it. That would be The Muppet's Christmas Carol. And generally just speaking, that's just a good heartwarming movie. There's no cynicism to it whatsoever. It's retelling one of the, well, Smithy talked about it in his Scrooge review. It's retelling one of the most classic Christmas stories you can ever hear of. But it kind of keeps it very true to the original story, very true to the spirit. It's not a parody. It's not changing too much, apart from obviously having Muppets in it. But, you know, well, we have that little artistic license. Of... <laughs> but, and, and with also... Michael Caine, you can't tell that there's Muppets there because he's <laughs> them like regular actors. That, that's literally what I was about to say. And also has got the great Michael Caine in it, now retired from acting, sadly. So I hear. But I, I do love hearing that story. There's the meme you always see floating about about it. And everyone yeah. like Michael Caine saying, I'm going to play this dead serious. <laughs> Actually true. Well, that's what he said to, oh God, Jim Henson's son. I forget his name. But when they were casting for it, he actually said to him, look, I'm going to play this like there's no Muppets in it. You're getting serious Michael Caine. And they just went, yeah, go for it. Why not? <laughs> and that is why out. we love him. That is why we love him. <laughs> In fairness, by the end of the movie, he does kind of end up like a Muppet. <laughs> in some respects, doing this again, dancing, but we'll get, we'll get to that bit eventually, I guess. Well, anyways, we're going to start with our first question here is what Muppet do you think fit their role the best in this movie? That's going to have, oh, excuse me, still got my coffee here. That's going to have to be Kermit the Frog playing Bob Cratchit because it's literally just however you picture Kermit in every single Muppets movie, they don't. Once again, coming back to why it's true to the books, they manage not to change his character, but you're also like, that is Kermit the Frog in a very bizarre way. It just seems like the most true-to-life character. Obviously, favourite is going to be a different Muppet, but... Okay, then what's what your favourite? Favourite? That's Gonzo. Come on. It's always Gonzo. <laughs> <laughs> so it's always going to be Gonzo. And plus, having him as Charles Dickens doing the omniscient, omni, uh, omniscient narrator bit is just absolutely mm -hmm. golden. Just having Rizzo running about doing the whole thing. Like apparently Dickens used to tour that play around Christmas time. And he used to do that kind of role in his real life. Mm. So when you know about that, it just makes it even funnier in a weird way. <laughs> well, my favorite is Rizzo the Rat. Oh, good, good second choice. <laughs> and uh because every single line that he had in this movie, I think I laughed at every <laughs> single one of them. He was so funny. <laughs> that is true, actually. He has a good, he has, he's really good at it. And he plays a really good second to Gonzo. As I think that's I think that's the first Muppets maybe I ever really remember seeing Rizzo in. I know he's been in others, but when I think of like every single movie, I'm like, that's the one I remember him most in. Mm -hmm. I think it's the one where he gets the biggest role yeah. out of all the movies, really. And as odd as it sounds, for a bunch of Muppets, there's some great physical comedy in that. Yeah, the scene where the scene where Rizzo's tail gets lit on fire and he just falls off and into the ice bucket, mm -hmm. he gets pulled out and he's just like a wee icicle. It's like <laughs> Gonzo just smashing him off the off the barrel. Like thank you, thank you. <laughs> it's just hilarious. Yeah, him and Gonzo together, too funny. It is absolutely brilliant. Speaking of scenes, because you just discussed one right there, what are some of your favorite scenes in this movie? Oh, God. Right, there's one that springs to mind immediately just because I love it, because I love Fozzie Bear. And that's the whole bit in the... Oh, God, is that... It's Christmas present. No, Christmas past, sorry, when he goes to Fozzie Wig's party. Mm -hmm. And he meets uh, Kate, uh, Michael Caine. I keep saying Michael Caine instead of Scrooge. <laughs> I mean, that's he fine. His, it works. He meets, he meets his young love, and it's like... 
and you hear him talk about, oh, I remember Mr. Fozzy Wink, he was a real harsh taskmaster and all this, and then you see Fozzy Bear come in, he's just the jolliest guy on earth. It's like, you start to see how people's memories alter. Right. Remember? And, it's, and then plus, as I say, he meets his young love in that scene. So it's a really sweet scene. And then once again, that comes back later on in the movie. Not much later, but still close enough to later. And then second scene, it's going to be the finale. When yeah. he just opens up the window and you see the wee, the wee rabbit that he kicked out the door at the start. He's like, you yeah, sir, what time is it? Christmas Day. Go and buy the biggest turkey you can find. And just throws a sack of money at him and the rabbit just goes right. <laughs> right into the snow. It's over behind my big sack of money. I, I don't know why, that just cracks me up. And runs right through Gonzo. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's right. And once again, another great physical comedy scene because they're right. it's the first scene where you see them interacting. In fact, it's the only scene where you see them really interacting with each other in the real world because mm -hmm. they're supposed to not be there. Like, as right. I say, they're meant to be the narrators. They're not meant to be in the scene and they still get run over somehow. It's like, yeah. this makes no logical sense, but I'm still laughing my ass off. And they also break the shelf in the past as well in that school. Oh, that's right. Yeah, they go. Do, 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 do. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a. That's, I don't know that that scene. That scene kind of hurts me when I watch it. Really? Yeah, it's just seeing Michael Caine. It's like, what are you gonna do? I'm just gonna study. I'm just gonna learn and learn and learn. It's like, go and have a life. You're a kid. But then once again, that's how you see Scrooge becoming who he is. Yeah. But then you see once again at the end of the movie, you see those walls break down. Yeah. And he kind of becomes the kid he was always meant to be. In a weird way. See, in my day, you just call those kids nerds. Nerds. <laughs> I don't know if I'm in jail that Michael Caine. Right. <laughs> Under any circumstance. <laughs> Even at like 61, I'm pretty sure he kicked my ass. <laughs> probably, probably. Now, one thing that I do like about this movie is it's technically a musical. Technically, and yes. We have several songs in this. So, which is your favorite song? Once again, it's going to be between the very first song, the Scrooge song, which is just describing how much of a Grinch he is, mm -hmm. or it's going to be the final, the very final scene when he's going towards Bob Cratchit's house, and it just gets so uplifting. Yeah. Also, also something I found out while researching the movie for this, I didn't realize this was Paul Williams' return to directing music. Oh. After uh, part, yeah, apparently uh, Paul Williams during the eighties and nineties had a lot of problems. Yeah. So when you hear, there's a couple of lines in that song where it's like you can realize that's a man coming through a really hard time in his life and actually getting back to the, something he loves. Yeah. So it's, it's actually really nice when you learn that fact because he couldn't get. He's a bit like Robert Downey Jr. and Iron Man couldn't get any work mm -hmm. for years. And then he came back, did that, and it's like. And it's Paul Williams, he's one of the greatest composers of our time. And realizing that was something he did on a whim. Yeah. And a that just way. gives an extra layer to the movie. Thank you for that, Chris. See, I did research. Occasionally I do work. <laughs> Look at you. Uh, yeah. My favorite is between the first song, the Scrooge song, because it really does set everything up. You have all the Muppets singing. It's great. It's a good opener for any musical. And then the Christmas scat between <laughs> Kermit and Tiny Tim. <laughs> yep. It's so short. I think it's like 30 seconds, but counts, a, counts I, I, I forgot about that. Yeah, because that's a like blink and you'll miss it one. Mm -hmm. Never even thought about that. Now, I'm going to ask this final question. I've asked it to everyone when we're talking about the favorite movies. Why should people put this in their yearly Christmas rotation? Oh, damn. Everything I just said, it's got great <laughs> songs. It's actually amazingly well directed. If you watch some of the forced perspective shots where the Muppets are actually, like there's that opening shot where you see Scrooge and it's like, I don't know how they did it, but like all the buildings are almost tilting inwards. Right. It's Plus it's got Michael Caine, as we already said. It's got Rizzo, it's got the Marleys. God damn it, there's so many good scenes I could put. There's so many scenes I've not even thought about. But you just watch and you're just like, this is absolutely brilliant film. And it's because a Scottish man told you to. That's and that as well, yes. <laughs> even, even, even though it was written by an Englishman, we'll let him away with it. <laughs> we'll, we'll let them away with that one. Just that one. Just, just that one, that's awesome. 
<laughs> I, that, that was the scene I never thought about. I was when I was rewatching it. The scene with Marley and Marley. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was a deliberate choice, but it reminded me of Hellraiser in a bizarre way. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like the chains coming out and pulling them back in. It was like, yeah. Oh, plus, all three of the ghosts are absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Sorry, I'm getting distracted about why you should watch this. I, I just, I cannot say enough good things about that movie at all. It's literally just a classic. It's been out, what, 1992, I think? Is it that long? Oh, let me check. I think, I think it was 92. I'm pretty sure it came out. Because I'm sure it's... I remember going to see it in the cinema when I was seven years, like, when I was young, I went to see it in the cinema and I've watched it every year. Ding, Sin. ding, ding. You are correct. Oh, geez, I was right. God sake. <laughs> that means, so that means, what year is this? This 2003, 2023. That means it's been out, what? No, seven. God's sake, I've watched this every Christmas for 33 odd years. There's why you should watch it. If I watch it every year for 33 years, that is a recommendation, if nothing else. <laughs> and I can't think of any other movie I've watched that many times. Well, no Christmas movie, anyway. This movie is two years older than me. <laughs> God, for God, you're so young. Uh, I think it's uh, 31 years, yeah, because I'm 94. This is 92. I'm 29, oh, so 31 oh, years. God. Math, people. <laughs> I also just remember something else about this movie. I forgot how creepy the ghost of Christmas present is, that wee girl. <laughs> I... Oh, in fact, another classic line from that one, like, Rizzo, once again, one of your lines, Rizzo, looks up at God mm -hmm. and goes, should we be worried about kids watching this? He goes, no, it's culture. <laughs> it's, like, it's, like, it's like, yeah, this is a scary movie, but they also managed to keep it very light. Yeah. For all For all the tones. It's like, it's one of those movies, I think you can enjoy it with any age, no matter what age yeah. you are, you can find something to love in this movie, whether it's the songs, the Muppets, the production design. There's something for everyone to love in this movie. And if you think about A Christmas Carol, just the original story, it's kind of scary when you think about it, like really go into it. And this is a story that has been told to kids <laughs> Since forever. like the 1800s. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I guess we're pretty good. We're pretty good with the, the scary ghost <laughs> that come to teach you lessons. Yeah, apparently, apparently, that's how we, apparently that's how we learn to love life. Just find a scary ghost to come and teach you things. If that's not the true moral of the story, what is? <laughs> <laughs> scare, scare kids into being good. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being with me on the 15th day of 25 Days of Christmas here on Off the Wall. Make sure to tune in tomorrow for day 16. <laughs>